Hello fellow photographers. In this week's episode, we're gonna be talking about my gear that I use for my personal work, my architecture and interior photography work for 2023, so far this year, but moving into 2024 as well. So if you're coming on a trip with me next year, you're gonna know what gear I'm using, but also I've changed one of my bodies recently, and that means it's about time for a bit of a revisit on everything that I'm using. Some of it's old, some of it's new, but all of it is relevant. Let's do this. For those of you who don't know who I am, my name is James Kerwin, and this, this is me. I'm an architecture and interior photographer from the UK that is now based in Istanbul. I love shooting heritage, abandoned places, relics, ruins, hidden gems and ghost towns, as well as off the beaten path locations all around the world. You can catch my content weekly, well, when life doesn't take over. So why don't you join me for the ride by subscribing, and you can also check out my website in the description below. So as I always say on my camera club talks, gear, you have to build up over time. You have to kind of start shooting, start earning money maybe with your photography before you start upgrading that gear, unless it's a second income stream, of course, or just a hobby. For me as a full-time professional, I have to think about my purchases wisely and actually build up a collection of what I need and what I want and iron out the creases, if you can put it like that, over a period of time. So I've tried to make all of my architecture kit as interchangeable as possible. And that means everything from microphones to tripods to lenses and cameras. And we're starting off with my tripods. This one's the first. I've had it for a while now and it's actually been discontinued, but some point in the future, I will change these legs. I've had these since 2016. This is, of course, the Benro Mac 3. How can you not notice that Benro Blue? This has lock legs and some people say oh it's not for me i don't like them people say oh they slide they they un come on they come loose if you tighten them up properly and you look after your tripod that should never happen when you put your camera on your tripod if you've done it up properly it shouldn't go anywhere it should be nice and solid and this tripod trust me is nice and solid i've made some changes over the years i've changed uh, the feet actually to be able to put on new rubber feet on the bottom so these aren't the originals and of course, I've put in a new pin here as well to lock down my head to. You just see me screwing on my geared head. Now this is the Sunway Photo GH Pro 2. They, uh, they built some quality stuff and this is no different. Actually, it had a few problems at the start, mainly because it was dropped on a tour that I made. A client dropped it uh, on a workshop off the back of the van, which wasn't a great start to life for the geared head. However, as you're gonna see here, when you place something like the R5 on top of this, it's got fine-tuned precision. You can do geared increment movements. You can unflip this as well, and you can do quick movements, and you can put it in here. Before this, I had the Benro GD3WH, so the geared drive three-way head, and it was fantastic as well. This is no different. The only difference here, in terms of its profile, it's thin. That means I can slide it into an empty lens pouch, and that's pretty important when I'm traveling on planes and the like. So my next tripod is this, the Benro Slim, and I've had this for quite a long time. Uh, I think I picked this up when it first came out. I was actually asked to test it out by Benro, and I've kept it in my kit ever since because it makes a handy, very lightweight option to chuck on the side of the bag on the plane and use it, of course, mostly for video, shooting myself, filming myself on location. I use this a lot. The thing as well is I do have rubber feet on both of my tripods, and I've done that on purpose. In architecture and interiors, uh, the floor is sometimes slippery or tiles, and you don't want your tripod moving about. Rubber can kind of assist with that. So I replaced the ones on my main tripod to stop them sliding around on the floor so that I'm not losing balance on that tripod and making sure I'm getting sturdy shots. That's quite important. Third tripod as well. Three, yes. This one, the little small rig tabletop tripod. I've actually got two of these small rig heads. You saw the other one on my second tripod, the Benro Slim. I bought two of these at the same time and they're interchangeable, of course. I don't always have to take two with me. I can take both legs and one head and just chop and change. That was the whole point of this kit. And this thing is great for a couple of reasons. First of all, it can get you in little locations. You're not able to take your big tripods in. It can get you on windowsills, it can get you low down in locations, and it can also get you on rooftop ledges. So for example, if you're sitting in cityscapes on something like this, you can get this on ledges and, and photograph from it. It also locks down nice and solid and holds the weight of my equipment. The other thing it can do, of course, is to get you vlogs. So you can pop your camera on here and vlog yourself. 
at arm's length. Great piece of equipment to add. So this camera, of course, is my main body. The Canon R5 is a fantastic camera. This isn't the main camera of choice as you're starting out. I built up to this over time, and that must be said. My previous camera, the 5DSR, if you're only doing photography, would be perfect for this line of work. I've done videos on the channel about that before, linked above. However, it is a fantastic camera for, obviously, an expensive price point. 4K video, in camera, it's got a mega sensor, you know, in terms of dynamic range. Of course, it's over 40 megapixels, and it can take the new RF mount. It's all bells, all whistles, all singing, all dancing kind of body and perfect for architecture work. You don't need to be aggressive with its files when you're editing them. And this can change lenses with my next camera. So it goes without saying I've shot hundreds, if not thousands of images already with a Canon R5. Here's some of those images on the screen now. Okay, next up in terms of cameras, we have this. My new edition, the Canon RP. And I've already done a video on the channel about this camera and I'll link that just above here in terms of, is it good for an architecture camera or not? And I would say the answer for that is of course, yes. Full frame camera. The reason I got this is not for that reason, actually for photography. It was, I was shooting my back of camera B-roll stuff and assistant video uh, camera, I suppose, was a M50 and that was awful in low light. This thing is a huge upgrade being full frame, but more importantly than that as well is the ability to go RF mount. So I can interchange all of my lenses between this and that previous camera, and that is awesome. In terms of specs of this, it's a full frame 26.2 megapixel camera. So it's in its own right, it's a good standalone second body, a backup camera, if something was to go wrong as well. But my main body, the Canon R5 that I just spoke about. Some of the other benefits of this camera, I would say is the same as the R5, to be honest with you. The fact that it's got a flip out screen, it can be a great second camera for me. The fact that it's got the manual controls sitting on top, all easy to get at, is really great. The only negatives with it are having different batteries to the R5. I wish it had the same ones. I wish Canon would do that more and more with its full frame lineup uh, because then batteries are much better than these kind of, it has the, uh, these ones that don't last very long, the LPE17 batteries. They don't last as long, of course, as the E6 ones. And to be honest with you, it's the other thing as well is, of course, one memory card slot in the bottom. But I just keep a large memory card in there. This is 164 gig, and that allows me to barely take that card out and just take the images either off the camera or um, pull them off you know, Wi-Fi mode to be able to get the images off as and when I need them into my laptop. So in terms of video, this is not perfect. In fact, originally I was looking at the Canon R8, the new one. This has crop 4K, of course, and ideally I would have uncrop 4K because I'm making 4K YouTube videos these days, but I couldn't justify the extra 1,000 plus pounds. I got this at a great deal on Amazon in the UK with a voucher, which unfortunately I forgot to take up, but this was 880 with a voucher for 160 to spend on any product on Amazon that's distributed by Amazon. So that is a great deal. In terms of how much I'm using this for a second camera, I think that's a great price point. The balance, the trade-off between price and usability is perfect, to be honest with you. The other thing you'll notice on both my cameras as well is the little Peak Design clips. I've actually put them on both of my cameras, just one on each, to be able to interchange on either, just to my wrist strap. So that's the only piece of equipment I have strap wise and that just if I'm taking video clips or if I'm doing photography I can interchange this strap especially if I'm in city urban locations it's pretty important to keep these pieces of equipment safe of course okay so once we've done the camera bodies the two main bodies we've just spoken about the next thing and the most important thing then is going to be this which is my EF the EOS R mount adapter. So this adapter is the glue that bonds all of my kit together because it's kind of the adapter that future-proofs me as well as takes me back in time, stitching old lenses on the front of my R5 and RP. So then moving on to my first lens, this is the Canon TSE 24mm Mark II, the f3.5 version. Now this is an EF lens, which I use with that lens mount that we just discussed. In any architecture photographer's kit, I would say this is the main piece of equipment. 
It's a brilliant focal length. You can create panoramics with it. 24 mil stops distortion. It's incredibly sharp. And in terms of like quality of lens and the fact that it can take filters on the front, so for example, polarizer filter, then this is the piece of kit that I go to time and time again. I've nearly photographed a whole book just with this lens. My uh, Lebanon book that I brought out a couple of years ago now, uh, this was actually used primarily in that book. So most of the images that I shot, the mansions or houses, this lens was used for those shots. There's a few negatives with it. It's getting quite old now. And of course, a newer version of this would be great. With me, I've noticed that some of these uh, dials, for example, these knobs, they do unscrew over time. They come off over time, which is, you have to keep an eye on it. Just in case one of these falls off when I'm transporting it around, I do keep this lens in a little pouch just so it falls off in the bag, it goes in the pouch and I can keep hold of it. You can buy spares, but they're pretty hard to get hold of at the moment. And that is my main negative for this lens is those little knobs are a bit fiddly and they do unscrew just generally over time, they get loose. Next up is the Canon 17mm TSE. Of course, this is also an EF lens and it's bulbous. It's super wide. Look at that front element, absolutely crazy front element to a lens collects dust of course and you've got to be very careful with it there's even dust on there now as I'm talking an amazing piece of equipment though uh, this can get you out of a lot of tight situations and it's not for everyday use I wouldn't say um, I know there's the ability to go super wide on all your shots and fit everything in and get that nice one-point perspective that's like the main big shot but just because it can do that doesn't mean it's the best composition to get so I do go to the 24 mil quite a bit but to get you out of tight situations, this is currently the widest TSC lens on the market for Canon, although I'm sure at some point that's going to change. There is off-brand versions you could use that are a little bit wider at the moment. This piece of equipment is still incredible. How you get 17mm into a lens like this and get it so wide to join together perfectly, to stitch together panos, to get the incredible sharpness and detail that this thing provides is amazing. In terms of commercial work, I used this a lot when I was shooting kitchens back in Norfolk, back in the UK. But for personal photography, I've used it less and less over the last couple of years. However, I do miss it when it's gone. It recently was broken and this is a new copy. And uh, when it was out of service for six or seven months, I missed it and I needed it. It's always the case. Even though it's heavier, it's worth carrying on trips. For that reason, I've always got it in the bag. In terms of looking after this, you have to be very careful with that and just knocking it and banging it in general. I found that it can get damaged if you're not careful with it. And for that reason, I put it in a lens pouch and then put it in either my trolley bag or rucksack, depending on what I'm taking on a trip. The other piece of equipment I've not mentioned, that's because I've not got with me today, is my adapter, uh, my extender to make my 24 mil lens, my tilt shift lens, 35 mil, and that's pretty important for fascias and facards of buildings like the one that I've just overlaid here. Um, so one of my main pieces of equipment is this, the 15 or 35 f2.8. And of course, this is the RF version, the 2.8 version. I got this a couple of years ago with my R5, um, so 2021 summer, that period. And in terms of a wide angle, it's as good as they come, of course. 15 is plenty wide enough. I've got the tilt shift if I want to go to any wider, you know, with a panoramic. But more importantly, 24 to 35, I use this lens a lot for. I've photographed a lot of stuff at that focal length range and 35 mil in particular is something that I love punching into and getting a bit more detail in a room, say for example. So in terms of video work, this lens is perfect because it's got 2.8, but for photography, of course, starting out in particular, you definitely don't need 2.8 for architecture work. You're shooting most of your images on f7.1, f8, f9. So an f4 version of a wide angle would be more than adequate. In these low light environments, you need to limit how much you're boosting that ISO up on video. And uh, a 2.8 version of this can really assist you. My next go-to piece of equipment in terms of lenses is the Canon 50mm 1.8. Uh, and this is the STM version. So this is fairly new. It's not the highest in terms of price point. In fact, I think it comes in at around 200 pounds or it used to a couple of years ago. I mostly bought it to pick up for those clips, the clips that you see on this channel quite a lot of location. So I use this a lot for video, silent motor, STM of course, and it allows me to be able to focus nearer and get some sort of nice compressed shots for some of those B-roll clips in videos. However, I have used this for photography as well on occasions. In terms of benefit to this lens, the main one is it's small and very light. 
and that helps to balance out some of the kit overall when I compare it to you know, some of the heavier bits of equipment like the tilt shift lenses, for example. My longest lens that I currently own is the 85mm 1.8. It's a very old EF lens that I use with an adapter, of course, the same adapter as my tilt shift lens for mostly for video, but I do get portraits with this a lot as well, like selfies, basically. It's a little bit heavy, heavier than, say, the 50mm, but not compared to a tilt shift lens, of course. And its autofocus is a little bit kind of, let's call it stiff. It's a little bit kind of, it searches a little bit when you're trying to focus. But it's an incredible lens in terms of depth of field and low, getting low light performance. And to be honest with you, for its price that I paid for it back in the day and how much use I've got out of it, it's something that I stuck around with me for a long time. I've never got rid of it. So I've kept it, use it with the adapters, and it's great for B-roll on this channel as well as selfies. Uh, I also have, of course, my battery pouch. Now, this isn't perfect by any means. It's a Vanguard battery pouch, and inside of here, I keep my batteries like so. So I've got all of the ones for the R5 lined up here. If they're finished with, I turn them this way around, and if they've still got charge in them, I leave them the right way around like these two. I also have tools like this one and a little box of tools like this. I always carry with me, so these have got Allen keys for my tripods, and this is like a tripod adjustable spanner, also by Sunway Photo. These are quite lightweight options that you can just put together in your bag like that. In terms of commercial work, this is not for that. If I'm doing lighting setups, I've actually got lighting equipment back at home. Okay, that's everything for today. I hope you've enjoyed this video. I've gone through most of my kit for personal architecture and interior photography. I hope you've enjoyed this video. If you've got any comments, please leave them below. Until next time on the channel, I need to get out of here. I'm in an old hammam and it's just starting to rain and there's a hole in the roof. Let's get out of here, shall we? Until next time, see you soon, guys.